Hi, welcome back. We're continuing our unit called the Garden, the Curtain, and the Cross. We're learning about the true story of why Jesus died and rose again. You know, last week we talked about God's good creation and how Adam and Eve had a perfect relationship with God. Today, we're going to read the beginning of the story and then we're going to add a new part. Are you ready to do that? Let's go. A very long time ago, right here in this world, there was a garden. In the garden, everything was wonderful. The world was full of laughing and playing and smiling and fun. There was nothing bad ever. There was no one sad ever. And best of all, God was there. He made it all. He was in charge of it all. He loved it all. People could see God and speak to God and just enjoy being with God. It was wonderful to live with God. But then, one day, the people did a terrible thing. They decided they didn't want to do what God said. They decided they wanted a world without God in charge. God calls this sin. Sin spoils things, so sin has no place in God's wonderful garden. God said to the people, You can't live with me in my garden anymore. And he sent them outside. To show the people they had to stay outside, God put some warrior angels in front of the garden. The angels were like a big keep out sign. What was the terrible thing that the people did? Right. They didn't want to do what God said. They didn't, they didn't want God to be in charge. Not doing what God says is sin. Sin is anything that we think, we say, or we do that doesn't please God. Let's read the story from the Bible. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 3. If you have your Bible, you can open with me. It'll also be on the screen. There we go. Genesis is at the beginning of your Bible. Chapter 3, we're going to start in verse 1. It says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, Oh, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will surely not die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit and she ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that things were different. Now, let's see what happened here. We have Adam and Eve who were willingly, well, they willingly turned away from God by choosing the forbidden fruit, by eating it. But before either of them ever touched the fruit, they had actually already sinned in their hearts. Eve had sinned by deciding to eat of the fruit, allowing herself to be influenced by the serpent, who was Satan. Eve began to doubt God and trust herself. Adam, Adam also sinned by deciding to let Eve eat the fruit, even though God said it would bring death. Then Eve didn't die right away, and so Adam ate also. So in the very first sin, we see people trusting themselves rather than God. You know, Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And who's included in that all? Just like Adam and Eve didn't want to listen to God or let him be in charge of them, sometimes, you guys, we're the same way. We don't want to think about what God wants us to do and how he wants us to live. 
We want to be the king. Anytime we do that, it's sin. And the Bible says all, every one of us sins. So what happened when Adam and Eve sinned? Well, that's right. You see, God put a keep out sign at the entrance to the garden. They could no longer be in the garden with God. Hmm. So what does that mean? Well, we have to understand who God is for this to make sense. He is holy, set apart, which means he's perfect. And by nature, he cannot be anywhere sin is. I tell you what, let's think about it like this. Do you guys know what this is? That's right, it's a magnet. Do you know what it does? Well, it does one of two things. It either attracts something or it, given the certain circumstance, if we do it upside down, it reflects or deflects something. So this is kind of like God. All right, let's say that the magnet is God. All right, the ball is us. So before sin in the garden, we're connected to God. We have this relationship to him. But now that sin has entered the picture, you see, it doesn't matter how much God pursues us, our sin deflects us from him. All right, so it doesn't matter what we do or what happens here. God's good, because of God's goodness and holiness, we cannot be with God. So why did God put that keep out sign at the entrance to the garden? Well, ultimately it was for their protection and our protection from the wrath of God. Let's listen to the consequence of sin from Genesis chapter three, starting at verse 23. All right. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man and at the east of the garden of Eden, he placed the cherubim and a flaming sword. This is what we might call the bad news promise. God kept his promise. Adam and Eve died in their relationship and friendship with God, and then eventually died physically. Do you remember before sin, we talked about how we had a connection with God. Adam and Eve did. But now that sin has entered the world, we no longer have this connection with God. So where's the gospel or the good news in all of this? Let's read John 3.16 together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God promised that there would be a rescuer. And who would that be? Jesus. So the bad news promise was that disobeying God would cause separation from God. But the good news promise was that God had a plan to reconnect us to God through the promised rescuer. Why don't you pray with me? God, we're so sorry for our sin. We struggle with it. We know that we don't always say the right thing. We don't always make the right choice. We don't always make the right decision. But you are so good that you sent your son Jesus to die for us, to come and take the punishment. And so, Father, we just confess that we're sinners and we need you. We need your help to do the things that you want us to do. And so we love you and we praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, God wants to walk with us and be with us. Next week, we'll see what God did next to live among his people.